to it. But as I promised, we're going to go on to Nigel Farage, who was first elected to the European Parliament for the South East in 1999. He's running again this time, this time as leader of the Brexit Party. He joins us now from Westrom in West Kent. Nigel Farage, thank you very much for your time. Good morning to you. Good morning. You've said that you've come out of semi-retirement to lead this party. You've been an MP for the South East for 20 years on a decent salary we estimate of £90,000 recently. Um, did you really treat those 20 years and that salary as semi-retirement? Uh, no, what I said was I was leader of a national party before, so rather than working 40 hours a week, I used to work 100 hours a week. Uh, and for the last couple of years, I've taken it a bit easier. Um, I'd fully intended to leave the European Parliament. I'd done my 20 years because I was told by Theresa May 108 times that we were leaving on the 29th of March. That's what the country were told. We haven't left on the 29th of March. We're now told we, we could be leaving by the 31st of October. Frankly, I don't trust this government or this parliament to give us anything like the Brexit that people voted for once in a referendum, twice, of course, in a general election when various promises were made. And that's why I've set the Brexit party up uh, to fight for democracy. You know, what kind of country are we if we have the biggest democratic exercise in our history and it's not delivered. I want it delivered. Theresa May has said we've got to do a deal. A lot of talk in the, today's newspapers about a be deal possibly being done next week between Labour and the government. Um, if there is a deal between Labour and the Conservatives, that means no European Parliament elections, or, or at the very least you probably wouldn't be able to take your seats. No chance possibly of that big triumph for you and your new party. Let me just tell you something. If that deal is done between Corbyn and May, which means a permanent customs union and effectively staying part of the single market, that will be the ultimate betrayal of all the promises that were made to voters. And I promise you, millions of voters would leave both the Conservative and Labour parties in that eventuality. If this deal goes ahead, there will not be a Conservative party that, that, that frankly, even existing. And I think we could be very close now to politics realigning in this country. What does the vote for your party, the Brexit party, achieve? Is it just about sending a message to the other parties, um, especially the government? Is that it? No, we want to change politics for good. For us, May the 23rd is the first step uh, to a much more radical kind of politics than I've ever been involved in before. We have got to break the two-party system. They serve nobody but themselves anymore. Uh, we have an electoral system that's out of date, a House of Lords that is discredited, a Parliament no longer in touch with the people of this country, um, and we've seen a betrayal of that referendum result. So, no, we want a radical transformation of British politics to make it directly accountable, to make it reflect who we are, and winning those European elections is a very good first step. Well, help us out here and tell us a little bit about what your party believes in. It might be easy for you, as it, as it looks perhaps from the polls, to win the European parliamentary elections on this single issue of the Brexit you say the people voted for. But there's no manifesto. There are no policy statements on a wide range of issues. If you run in for Westminster, which everyone's now sensing and you've talked about putting candidates up, what is your party about? about except Brexit? Well, well, let's be clear that this is not just another issue. This is about whether we are a democratic nation. It's about how the rest of the world sees us. And we will fight the European elections on democracy and trust. Beyond that, of course, we'll have a broad range of policies. But by the way, I will never use the word manifesto again in my life. Uh, the word manifesto has a word association with lies because both the Labour and Conservative parties told us in 2017 they would deliver the Brexit we voted for and they're not doing it. So I will call it in future a policy platform. OK, but I mean, if you, unless you have one and you clearly don't at the moment, how can you possibly held, be held accountable? What do people think they're going to be voting no, no, for? No, 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 no. We are... Well, if we're not a democratic country, you may as well close Parliament down and not bother with elections. Just, just have us run by Mr Juncker and a few bureaucrats. This is the most important question we've asked ourselves in this country for 300 years. That is what May the 23rd is all about. Beyond that, we will talk about health, education and everything else. Um, you talk about whether or not we're a democratic country. Some might question whether yours is a really democratic party. UKIP's number one candidate in the South East, your old colleague Piers Walkup, said on this programme last week, Nigel Farage left UKIP because he wanted to be in complete control. He set up a party surrounded entirely by people selected by him. Is he right? 
well, I'm running this new party like a company, um, and it's so far, we're four and a half weeks into our existence, we're topping the polls at 30%, I think we're getting it right. You're running to be MEP for the South East again, but you're doing very well in the polls for the European yeah. elections. You spoke this morning on Sky of the prospect of a political realignment, and you've talked about it again on this programme. With the Tory party as you see it no longer fit yeah. for purpose, is this Nigel Farage who wants to be Prime Minister? Uh, it's Nigel Farage that wants to radically change British politics. I've never had those kind of political ambitions. I'm not like sort of a Boris that dreamt from Oxford of being the PM. What I think I'm good at is, is making arguments and shifting the debate in the country. I think without my efforts, I, to be honest, I doubt we've had a referendum. And I now want to try and use uh, you know, whatever I'm good at to try and reshape British politics. I've no ambition myself to finish up at the top of it. But if I can be an agent for change, an agent for democracy, I'd be very happy to do that. Nigel Farage, thank you for joining us. From you, thank you very much indeed, James. Thank you for joining us on that one. Now, the Brexit party isn't the only new party fighting the European parliamentary elections. The new pro-Remain party, Change UK, are also standing. In Westminster, they've got 11 MPs who defected to them from Labour and the Conservatives. Here in our region, one of the most senior politicians who's defected to them after 16 years as a councillor and 27 years as a member of the Labour Party is a former leader of Brighton & Hove City Council. He's Warren Morgan and he joins us now. Warren Morgan, lovely to have you with us. Your party didn't run candidates in the local elections. The Lib Dems did, and uh, they, as another pro-Remain party, had a pretty good night in our region and elsewhere. For instance, they retained Eastbourne Council. How did you feel seeing them do well? Well, obviously the Lib Dems are pro-Remain, but they've been pro-Remain for a long time. And given that the polls now show that some 55 to 60 percent of people are pro-Remain, the question should be why have they not coalesced around the Lib Dems uh, to a greater extent? Now, Change UK brings together people from the Lib Dems, from the Conservatives, from Labour like myself, but 40 percent of, of uh, people in the party are, are people from outside of politics. In fact, 60 percent of the candidates on the, the list with me are people uh, uh, there's an ambassador, former UK ambassador, someone from the media, a former nurse, a former army officer. So we're drawing in people from across the spectrum, political spectrum, and from without this political spectrum to, to really bring forward a united front for Remain. OK. It is obvious to everybody on the outside that you are all an, in danger of splitting the Remain vote at the European elections. Isn't that your focus, if that really matters, if Remain is, is so, so important to you? Well, under the system of elections used for the European elections, it's not possible to have an alliance, a pact, or any second preferences. So we had no choice but to go out there and to give the broadest possible appeal to Remain voters who, for whatever reason, can't vote for the Lib Dems because of the coalition, for the Greens as a single-issue party, and obviously for Labour, where you've seen Jeremy Corbyn very clearly in the last few days say that he is pro-doing a, a deal on Brexit with Theresa May this week. We've seen a lot of people leave the Labour party cutting up their cards tony robinson the most high profile please in the don't last quote of him days. it was quite rude <laughs> no i won't <laughs> <laughs> what he said about the leadership when you left labor in february you said the independent group is a blank sheet of paper some would say it still is um what can change uk say to people who vote lib dem and green out of conviction or identification with policies for example if, if you want more done about climate change or recycling you might vote green what do you think Change UK is for people at this or any other election? And it's a very really similar point that I was making to Nigel Farage about single issue politics. Well, we can build a party that has a much broader appeal than, than any of the current parties. And, and we've heard earlier on that, that Labour and the Conservatives are on the verge of, of breaking up and, and they, they've lost vote share this week. We will build our policies through the summer with a series of policy events. We're not governed by ideology like Labour and the Conservatives are. We're not a single issue party like the Greens or the Brexit party. We will bring an evidence-based approach to policy, not an ideological one. And that's attracting an awful lot of people, Gavin Esler in London, is one of the people that's joined us to to create a new kind of politics our politics is broken and we do need a way through it and that's not just Brexit but that's the most urgent issue you've worked with the Greens on, on local councils do you really think it's fair to call them a single issue party uh, that does tend to to influence pretty much everything that they do uh, they weren't a, an easy party to work with through my uh, 16 years as a councillor um, so you know we, we're looking much 
broadly than that, but we do have, uh, there's another environmental mm -hmm. lawyer who's one of the Change UK candidates alongside me. So that is a very important policy and only by remaining in Europe can we effectively address the climate emergency that we have. You voted with Labour in your last weeks as an independent councillor in Brighton and Hove and you said that you wouldn't want to run against Labour friends in a council election and you didn't stand again. Lots of people might say your heart is still Labour, is it? Uh, sadly it's not. Uh, it was a huge part of my life for 27 years. But Change UK, um, I, I felt so positive. I was so positive at the launch event. Mm. Uh, it, there is such a, a great feeling behind it uh, and, and a really positive approach to politics, okay. uh, to fixing our broken politics. And I'm really glad uh, and very proud to be uh, number three on the list for the South East. We've almost no time left, about 45 seconds left in the programme. What do you two, as representatives of what people consider the main parties, Karen Constantine in one sentence, what do you think of the new parties that you've heard from this morning? I think it's ridiculous to say Labour Party is broken. I think it's ridiculous to say we're on the verge of separating. I think you need to, to take your anger and fire it very firmly at the Conservative Party. And a final thought to Helen Grant, what you've heard this morning. And I just parties. feel we should all be focusing on honouring the referendum, which was clear, decisive, the people have spoken, coming together and leaving the EU. It was anything but clear, the referendum. <laughs> we are never going to get these two to agree on that. Warren, <laughs> lovely to see you this morning. <laughs> Helen and Karen, thank you both very much indeed for coming in. That's all we've got. The Liberal Democrats, who are of course committed Europhiles, who've campaigned long and hard for a people's vote, which they hope would overturn the 2016 referendum. And then UKIP, whose very reason for being is for the UK to leave the European Union. Here's Jerry Thomas with a quick outline of their policies. Some of the key points that underpin the Liberal Democrats' electoral offer. London thrives because it's a European as well as an English city. There is no Brexit deal that is good for London. Every sector, from hospitality to healthcare, from construction to creative industries, benefits from the free movement of people and frictionless trade with our EU friends and partners. Two main challenges for London are directly dependent on EU membership, environment and crime. Climate change and air pollution do not stop at national borders, and neither do organised crime and human trafficking. UKIP will leave the EU by repealing the 1972 European Communities Act. It opposes a second referendum. UKIP will continue to oppose business-unfriendly EU legislation in the European Parliament. UKIP supports reciprocal rights for EU citizens and will end free movement to alleviate housing, pollution and the overcrowding crisis. Well, joining us now is the Lib Dem candidate, Irina von Visa, and Richard Brain, who is standing for UKIP. Welcome to both of you. Um, you. So, Irina, we're going to start with you. Obviously, uh, some good work for the Lib Dems in the uh, local elections. But really, you know, London, Remain City, you guys should be hoping to clean up in these elections. Absolutely. And I think we will. And I will tell you why, Elizabeth. So the first thing is that I've lived in London for 22 years. I'm the mother of a teenage daughter. And um, I know the problems London is facing, of course, um, just to name two, the environment and crime. And I think at the basis is one fundamental policy that Lib Dems have been unequivocally pro uh, proposing for the last two years, and that is to stop Brexit. So we're running on a very clear message. Every vote for the Liberal Democrats is a vote to stop Brexit. London is a remain city. London depends vitally on its membership in the European Union. And that's why I think we will have a very good result in London. Well, the local elections this week, uh, not here in London, um, but uh, it did look as though the Lib Dems were cutting through. But are you concerned with the Euro elections that, you know, Change UK, the new uh, group that's come out of the independent group, um, that they could be stealing some of your votes? Well, I am, of course, sad that the Remain vote is going to be split. It's not just Change UK, of course, there's also the Green Party. I would have liked to see us work together. There were two reasons why we couldn't. The first one is that, of course, the elections were only decided very late in the game. It was too late to run on a joint platform under the European election. So that's, is that the only reason? Because well, no, the way it's not. some people tell it, it's more that sort of your advances were rebuffed. Well, the other what, reason change, okay. is that actually we did offer um, to both parties to work together to not 
oppose each other. Unfortunately, that offer was not accepted. I'm quite sad about this because I'm a Remainer through and through. I want to see one Remain voice. But of course, Liberal Democrats, and based on the amazing success we've had in the local elections, have a track record for opposing Brex Brexit, and I think people know well, that. Okay, thank you very much, Irina. Now, Richard, you, you guys are on opposite sides in almost every way, um, but I put it to you as well that it looks like uh, Nigel Farage is going to be sort of rather stealing your thunder. Well, that remains to be seen. Uh, UKIP has campaigned for 25 years 27 years, in fact, to get us to this stage. And what isn't talked about very often is uh, how Brexit is going to be a liberating force. We're going to be able to deregulate and we're going to see an, um, a, a subsequent improvement in our economy as a result because freedom, democracy always brings good business. And that's something to look forward to, especially in London, which is the world's number one finance centre and has a huge amount to gain when we actually leave. But you and I both know that London has a much higher proportion of Remain voters than other parts of England. So it is a bit more of an uphill battle for you in London, isn't it? It's very difficult in London, but uh, London isn't a country. It's the capital of the United Kingdom. And so it has to go along with the United Kingdom. The majority voted to leave. If we live in a that's democracy, not, then mean, the majority's Richard, vote that's not must, a great message. must be honoured. That's not a great message. Sort of, it almost sounds slightly threatening towards the voters of London. They have to go along with it. If there had been a general election and, let's say, Labour were elected and three years later the Tories still hadn't handed over power to, the, to Labour and allowed them to form a government, what kind of situation do you think you would see in this country? It's an absolute disgrace what's happened. It's a disgrace that I'm having to stand in these elections, which are a great waste of taxpayers' money. And uh, it's it, it, honestly, the, so many people in this country are so angry that our establishment is refusing they, to actually deliver I mean, what they promised in 2016. I think a lot of people would agree that the electorate is kind of broadly speaking quite angry at the moment. But in a, a multicultural city like London, your leader, Gerard Batten, on the record as you know, using phrases like Islam is a, is a death cult, that's not helping you. And for you as a candidate running in these elections, that makes things pretty tough. There are major problems in this country with extremism, and it's important that we talk about it. So uh, I don't think uh, there's any problem with talking openly about problems with Islam. Uh, and it's not just in this country, it's all over the world. So I would defend uh, what he said. I think he said the right thing. I think we need to recognize that there is a problem. We need to look at how churches are being bombed. We need to try to understand why. Okay. And we cannot brush that under the carpet and pretend that there isn't a problem, no matter how much our media would like to. Okay. Irina, so, I mean, the electorate is divided. Even in London, large numbers of people think very differently from the way you do. So what steps are the Lib Dems taking to try and uh, to, to make inroads in those parts of London which didn't vote Remain? Well, I think we, we have moved on quite, quite a while um, from the original referendum. And indeed, a lot of people have changed their minds. They've changed their minds for good reason, of course, because we've seen what, what a mess this has created. And for London in particular, it is absolutely critical that people understand the direct link between our membership in the EU and their daily lives. Let me give you just one example, crime. London has been really uh, plagued by knife crime in, in recent months and weeks in particular. And you know, I don't want my daughter to, to be scared to, to walk on the streets of London. Many people don't know how much European institutions like Europol, like the European Arrest Warrant, like Eurojust, have done really to make people's lives safer. We cannot really trace criminals without that vital cooperation between law enforcement agencies in the European Union. OK. All right. And Richard, you know, there are some good points there, aren't there, about the cooperation that's necessary to deal with crime, but then also in a city like London, business, the way we trade, the way we work with people. Well, the knife crime point is very simple. Uh, politically correct policing has made uh, the police force re reduce very, very significantly the number of stop and searches that they do. Uh, and that is a license to criminals, uh, particularly in drug gangs, who wish to uh, carry lethal weapons of that kind. So that's something that is being solved, should be solved. And I'm afraid to say that uh, our, our mayor and our prime minister are both implicated in that very bad decision to reduce the number of stop and searches done by the police. Okay, well, I think we're going to move over now. Thank you very much uh, to both of you.